Now for export, let's go back to the beginning again. Uh, here under File, just go to Export To. And again, here you see a number of um, a number of options. So PDF again is what I recommend if you want to be absolutely sure that uh, your presentation looks the same from computer to computer, and that it will open no matter what software is installed on the computer. You don't get fancy transitions, and you don't get animations with the PDF. But what you get is the security of knowing that you can open it anywhere without a, any issue. You can also export it as a PowerPoint file. And again, uh, PowerPoint is pretty much the, the standard for these things. So if you export it as a PowerPoint, you can both open it in PowerPoint. So people are much more likely to have the whole Microsoft Office suite installed. or um, if you're using Google Slides, you can actually import a PowerPoint into Google Slides without any, any issues either. HTML, I'm going to say you're going to rarely want to do that. Keynote 09 is if you have to have uh, compatibility with older versions. With PowerPoint, as well as Keynote, there's always uh, options when you're trying to go to earlier versions of the software. So this will not won't open in uh, the earlier Keynote 09. If you, if you only have the original Keynote installed, then this won't open either. Individual images might be something you want. If, um, again, if, let's use the example of doing charts and graphs that you want to incorporate into something like a documentary. Then uh, if there's no animation involved in the chart or graph, you can just do them, uh, export them as images, and you'll get a really, if you've sized everything correctly ahead of time, then you'll get a really nice export. Uh, the two we're really looking at today are PDF and QuickTime. So we'll start with PDF, since that's the most basic one. And again, here it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can choose whether you want to include the presenter notes or not. Uh, but if you include the presenter notes, uh, that would be something that, you know, I'm, actually I've, I've never included presenter notes, so I'm not sure if they actually show up on screen or not. Um, we'll try that and see what, what happens. Um, if you have some animation, animation in PowerPoint and Keynote works by kind of building multiple pages into that, so it would print each page as a separate each stage of the build is a separate page. I'm going to change the image quality to best. I'm not going to require a password to open because it will just give me another password I have to remember. And if I'm using this uh, and I want other people to look at it, they, they'll have to remember the password or I'll, I'll have to send it to them. If you've skipped any slides, you can include this or not. It's up to you. Uh, next, um, it will just go in, you decide where you want to um, save it. And here it's automatically saving it in my um, iCloud account. I'm not sure if I want that. Um, I think for this one, I will save it on the desktop. A new folder. I'm just going to call it Keynotes. And I'm going to get rid of the copy. And I'm going to export it there. And now I'm just curious, because I've never actually exported with presenter notes before, what it looks, and because this has presenter notes, curious um, what it actually looks like in Acrobat. So I'm going to go open with Acrobat. And uh, yes, so if you choose to export it with uh, presenter notes, I don't recommend this if, um, if this is what you're doing. You're using this to give the presentation. If you had this open on a separate iPad or something and you were using this as the guide while you were going through things, that might be okay. But in general, I would say don't include the presenter notes. Now the other thing you can do um, if you export it as a PDF, uh, you can set it up so that when you open it, it's automatically going to um, use the kind of full screen slideshow format to show it. And that could be really good if what you're doing is sending this to someone else so that they can they can watch it. 
So here, just go under File, Properties. Here, uh, we're not in, interested in the description. You can add keynotes, author, subject if you want. Uh, what I'm interested in is initial view. So here, I want to open in full screen mode. Uh, you can choose to hide the menu bars, toolbars, and all that. Uh, let's go resize window to initial page, center window on screen. And uh, yeah, so this is, um, this is just going to open it up as a slideshow that can then be advanced with the, um, you know, with the arrows or with the window controls. So I'm going to click OK and then save that. And now the next time I open this, I'm just going to go back here. I'll get the uh, trying to put Acrobat in full screen mode, little warning. I'm going to click on remember my choice and go yes. And now it's showing up full screen. It looks a little bit odd because when I exported it, I chose the include presenter notes. So it's leaving that space down there for the presenter notes, which are on roughly uh, two thirds of the, doc of the individual pages. So again, I included the pre presenter notes. I'm going to recommend that you don't. Uh, I'm just going to hit Escape to leave that, and I'm going to quit Acrobat. Now, if we go back here, I want to uh, look at one of the other options. Actually, maybe let's just quickly um, export to PDF uh, without including the presenter notes, and we'll see the difference for that right away. OK, uh, I'm just going to keep the name the same. And now if we go over here, just look at the difference. So this one, if we go open with Acrobat. Now the reason why I always uh, right click to open it up because the default on a Mac is to open PDFs in preview. It's fine, you can do a slideshow in preview, but you can't set it to automatically open in full screen mode. Uh, so here again, without the presenter notes, uh, if we go in, and do properties and set it to uh, set the window options. Then what's going to happen when we save this? So I'm going to go Command S and Command W. Now when we reopen it, again it's going to give me the full screen warning. And it will open it in a regular slideshow view, which is going to look much better without the presenter notes on there. Now, one more thing that um, I'll just kind of touch on briefly here. Uh, now, on most Macs, uh, PDFs are set to open with Preview, not Acrobat. If you want to change that, just select a PDF, go Command-I, or um, Get Info. It's Actually, I, I use the key command all the time. I'm not really sure where, where you find it otherwise. but. Um, Let's just kind of look at that briefly. So uh, file, get info, there it is. So command I is the key command. It's in the finder under file, get info, if you can't remember that. Now here, you can see that uh, it's got basic information about the file. And what I'm interested in is the open with. So here, because I've already reset all the files, PDF files on my computer to open with Acrobat, that's the default. If it is preview, um, just uh, change it. Here I'm changing it back to preview. So I changed all the documents so they'll now open with preview. And to change it back, just scroll down the list here, go to Adobe Acrobat, and change all. Uh, I usually do that with uh, MP4s and uh, DynamoV files as well because uh, for some reason, well, MP4s are the worst. They always, for a while on my computer, they were always opening with iTunes, and WAV files and AIFF files are bad too. I don't want to add them to my um, iTunes library most of the time. So just selecting one file with that file extension and then choosing the program you actually want it to open with over here is actually going to make things a little bit more straightforward. Okay, but uh, back to our subject today, which is Keynote. And that's what you get when you export as a PDF. 
Uh, there are other interesting possibilities if you choose file print. You remember on the Mac, um, one of the options when you choose print is to save a file as a PDF. So here, well, I'm just going to select show details. And here you can see some of the options are a little bit different from what we would expect from um, just a normal print as a PDF uh, dialog. So we can choose to just print the slide. We can print it as a grid. We can print it as a handout. And in this case, you know, it's got an area where you can take notes. If you're printing these for your audience, you could give them this and there's a space for them to take notes on what you're saying. You can do it as an outline view. And this is kind of neat because it will give you like just the, the basic points that you've gone through but without the image. So if you just want to give them that kind of a text-only file, this, this would be good. So you can print this as a PDF, and just to kind of go through the slide would give you 12 pages because there are 12 slides. The grid one would give you three. The handout, four pages. And the outline, you're just getting two pages, so you could do it as a double-sided, single page. So here you would just go Save as PDF. And that will give you, now these are horrible names, but I'm just doing this as an example, give you something like this. So here all the bullet points have been converted to, uh, to bullet points, but the number corresponds to the uh, slide. Now here I would think it would be really nice if it would also incorporated a little thumbnail, maybe a little bit bigger than this that actually showed you um, what the picture on the slide was. Especially if it wasn't just something like this, where it's just a title and it doesn't matter, but something like this, where there are no bullet points and it's just an image that illustrates whatever it is you're talking about at that particular